I'm sure we've all heard the expression that when the US catches a cold, Canada gets sick as well. What about the United Kingdom? We're discussing that now, but first I just want to say thank you to all of you who've subscribed to this channel so far. We've just hit the 500 mark this week and your support means a lot. So if you do watch these videos, please do consider subscribing as it's a massive contributor to growth. That said, let's get on with our look at how Canada is on a crash course with what's happening in Britain right now. Unlike the US, Canada is still tied to the monarchy and the homeland isn't looking very promising right now, is it? What you've got coming out now is a working class man. The man who won't watch his telly, who's been force fed this factual stuff about being a racist and about a bad history, and that's the majority. And they're the ones that are coming out, they'll be the strong ones. The men who own their families, working men who don't do none of the small stuff. This is what edge are turning now, because we're playing identity politics. On cue, the mainstream media has reactively labeled any Brightons storming the streets right now as being part of the far right. In other words, you're expected to write off these people as being racist, xenophobic goons operating from a place of completely irrational rage. This brings me to another expression you've probably heard. It's an expression the liberals and their voter base constantly neglect to our collective detriment. The expression is as follows. Those who forget the past are condemned to repeat it. As the UK is consumed with chaos, this is what our pretend immigration minister, Mark Miller, has to say about the mess he, his best friend Trudeau, and his predecessor, Sean Frazier, have created. 60% of Canadians feel that too many immigrants are coming to Canada. So a majority of Canadians feel that way. Uh, you're on the record as saying that you believe that immigration could be a top or the top election issue. Uh, what would the election, what would the ballot box question be? If immigration was the top election issue, what would the question be? <laughs> that's, that's a really good. I, I think if I knew the top election uh, question and I was posing it to you, I'd either, either be stupid to tell you or, or lying. So, uh, you know, every political guru goes around and says this is going to be the top uh, political question. I think immigration generally, I think the levels and how we are doing a, a good or good job or not will probably be a matter of debate. I don't know if it'll be the top question. There, we are often surprised by, by issues. Uh, the 2015 election, we had the horrific visuals of Alien you know, Kurdi uh, washed up uh, on European shores, and that was an important polarizing aspect of, of the election. We, uh, we've had the uh, evacuation of Kabul as a topic for the first two weeks of the last election. So that's something that, um, that, that, that I, I could could happen. You could always have surprises, but they are they become immigration themed. Uh, I do think this is an important topic. Canadians increasingly are focused on this issue. The sentiments in the polls that you see are often quite nuanced. It, often Canadians, when you dig into those numbers, uh, to the extent the polls go into that level of granularity, are still very positive about immigration. But they don't want it done in an uncontrolled way. Um, and in a way that doesn't make sense for the economy. No one's saying uh, you do have racism in this country, but I wouldn't ascribe that to all the sentiment and some of the head scratching that you're seeing about the volumes that were coming in. Those discussions uh, that I have around the Christmas table with my relatives, those play themselves out on scale and you have a range of differing views. And I think we have to be open enough as a country to have rational discussions about these things. Uh, and not fall into sort of political dogmatism. I'll go ahead and TLDR the contents of that video for Mark. He knows they've pooped the bed, but since they're guaranteed to lose power in the next election, they don't consider it to be their problem anymore. The liberals have made their money. They've secured their golden pensions. And in Mark Miller's case, as a lawyer, he's guaranteed top pay for the bare minimum of work at the law firm of his choice. He won't be able to see the riots he's caused from the 30th floor penthouse office he'll be working from once he leaves Ottawa. Which brings us to Canada's crown jewel, Toronto, which is presently falling. Its infrastructure can't keep up with growth. Its housing is astronomically expensive while salaries remain stubbornly low. In other words, this is a powder keg just waiting to ignite into exactly what we're seeing over in the UK right now. What's Olivia Chow's game plan? Why, her plan is to dance those negative vibes away.
know, it would really bother me in the past when I'd see people tweeting or just boasting anywhere on social media that Canada is broken. It really would get to me. I always felt it was, I don't know, an exaggeration. But when you see what's going on around us, when you can clearly see it's a problem, and the people who show the least amount of concern are the ones who are the most inoculated. Now, if you're living in Toronto, I'm sorry, but you're stuck with Olivia Chow for quite some time to come. There is, however, hope for us on the federal level because we are now within 14 months of the election, an election we know we can win. And in closing, I want to share with you a presentation that really stood out to me. It's a clip from the conference the People's Party of Canada held in Gatineau. The speaker you're about to see, his name is David Haskell, and if you're looking to get more support for the political team you want to see in power, you might want to take notes on his speech, regardless of your party colors. Thank you very much for watching, and one more time, if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, please consider doing so.